Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. This tutorial is based upon some of the questions that we've been receiving or a question that we've been receiving in the channel. So the question being, what is args and quags? So this tutorial is based and directed at complete beginners uh, to both Django and Python. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a much better idea of what the single and double asterisk does. So here we are in the code here, and this is just a piece of code from the building a simple blog series. Now, what you're looking at here is uh, we've got this URL pattern here, which is a path to the home page, and that represents this home page here if you fire up the code. So the code is in the description for this if you want to follow along. So what's happening here, if you're new to Django, when I refresh this page, that's going to basically send a signal or is going to inquire this URL path to be fired off. And you can see here, this is connected to the views home. So if I go into views, it's going to run this function here. So that's going to be our setup for this tutorial. So let's go ahead now and start thinking about what these asterisks are for. So let's first of all set up a new function so that we can show this. So let's go ahead and create a new function, um, add numbers. Um, we're going to take in three parameters here. So it's, we, let's just name them A, B, and C. So what we have here then are three positional arguments. We can call this function and pass items into these three arguments, which can then be utilized within this function. So let's go ahead and send some data across and let's add them up. So um, maybe sum equals A plus B plus C. Then what we're going to do is just print this out. So print uh, sum. So we'll print sum and that's going to appear in the terminal. So let's go ahead and call this function and send some data across so that we can add it all up. So inside of the home here, now remember, every time we refresh this page, this home function will run. So let's go ahead and call the function and then let's just pass some data across. So one, two, and three. So we're going to pass three numbers into our positional arguments here. They're going to be utilized and added up and then we're going to print it out. So we can now go ahead and refresh this page, come back here and make sure that's saved. Um, I think it was saved. Let's uh, try that again. It looks like it's working here, but let's just try that again. So I'm just going to refresh the page. You can see here we have a return of six. So that's what's being printed out here, six. And obviously if we were to change this to maybe two, two and two, or maybe three, three and three, because it's going to print out the same number. So nine we're expecting now. So I refresh again, and you can see we now receive nine. So of course it's not just numbers that we can pass over. We could also add a string, for example. And then of course we can't add these, this up now because we're using a string integers and integers. So let's go ahead and just print out, for example, A, B, and C. So if I refresh, come back here, you can see that we now have printed out hello three and three. So the important factor here is that what we're referring to these as our positional arguments. So notice that the position of these um, arguments here, they're being placed in print and they're in position. So we take hello, uh, it goes into A, three goes into B, and then three there goes into C. So we're defining through these positional arguments what data we're sending across to then be printed out. So let's go ahead now and think about our asterisks. So let's just think this way to begin with. Now, what we're doing here is we're defining these positional arguments. So for example, if I were to send more than three items here, we have three positional arguments here. So if I were to send more and then try to then refresh, you'll notice that we receive an error. So this function is always going to expect three positional arguments. Now, as your program scales, that could potentially cause issues. Um, 
or at least you'll need to have to track all these positional arguments. And that's not necessarily a very practical way of working. So a better way of working would be to have some sort of way of not necessarily defining the individual arguments here, but just maybe just to define one. And then within that one, we could have multiple arguments we could then utilize within our function. And I guess that's where we're moving to. So let's just go ahead and let's just make a new list here. So we're going to build a simple list, maybe one, two, and three. So that's our list. And we're going to return, we're going to return this list. Okay, so now when we call this function, it will return the list. Obviously, we don't need to do it this way, but this is how we're going to set this up. So our list equals, and then we're going to refer to our function. So that's going to return our list. So what we want to do with our list is to print it out. So when we're handling data like this, for example, where we have multiple items, it could mean that we have to loop through the items in order to receive all the data. Well, here what we can do is use the single asterisk. So let's just try this, print, and then we're going to use the single and then ref defer, refer sorry, to the, the variable here, L, which is obviously holding this list that we defined in this function here. So we're passing over through return the list here. We're grabbing this list from the function, putting it into L, and then we're going to unpack it using the asterisk. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I refresh, uh, you can now see, maybe somewhere it's not working. So let's just find out why this is not working. Um, add numbers, L, return L. Okay, so maybe I didn't save it. So let's just try this again. There we go, so I didn't save. So here you can see what gets returned from this print is the numbers one, two, and three. So you can clearly see here, or start to begin, this asterisk here is utilized to potentially unpack a list. So that could be handy. So let's go back into this and let's just type in our uh, A, B, and C again in our original function here. And let's just now remove this. Let's just uh, type in print. And this time we're going to print A, B, and C again. Okay, so wonder what we can do now with this asterisk here. So let's go ahead and in the home, we're going to define our list here. So our list um, will be, for example, one, two, and three. And then we're going to pass that list across. So let's do that, add numbers. Now this time we're going to not define um, what we're going to pass across in a positional sense like this manually. We're going to do this using an asterisk. So let's do this by utilizing star and the name of this variable here, L, which is holding this list. And then we're going to pass this across. Now what we've done here is we've unpacked this list. So really what we're sending across is one, two, and three over to our positional arguments here. But of course we're utilizing the asterisk, so it unpacks it for us. So what we should now see is a print of A, B, and C, which is going to be one, two, and three. So let's just go ahead and refresh our page again. And this is what we receive. One, two, and three gets printed out. So hopefully at this point, you've got a better idea of what the asterisk does when inside of a function or when used inside of a function here. So now let's take a look at args. So what does an args do here? in our function definition. So you can see what's happened here in that we've called our function with three positional arguments. And what gets printed here is a tuple. So we can say the args is a tuple. So I guess the general definition of a tuple is a collection which is ordered and unchangeable. So you can see here that the tuple is uh, written in Python with round brackets, and we've got the comma to differentiate the different items within our tuple. So hopefully you can start to see the benefit here because 
Whereas before we defined our positional arguments and we had to make sure that we had five, we couldn't use six, otherwise there'd be an error. Now what we have is a flexibility where we can just continue adding arguments, positional arguments here. And the args will be able to take that in. You can see that we can then print it out. So let's just refresh and you can see that there's no problem with that. And we can just continue. So we can go ahead and mix this up, for example. So for example, if we had um, some more kind of formal parameter list here, so let's just take in A and args. So what's going to happen here is the first positional argument here is going to be placed into A and the rest will then be utilized in args. So let's just take um, a refresh again and see this in action. So you can see here we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. A wasn't actually printed out because we haven't defined that. So let's go ahead and do that. We refresh and there we go. So you can see now number one uh, is very much on its own and the rest here are within this collection. So we can perform different actions on args. So for example, we can uh, pretty much loop them out. So arg in args, um, let's go ahead and print arg. So that's going to give us a, a list of all the items in arg, um, or the args. And then let's go ahead and print um, maybe a sum. Let's add them all up. Args. So let's uh, add them all up also. So let's go ahead and refresh and see what we receive. So you can see here we have eight. Um, oh, if we just uh, move this up a little bit, you can see we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that we can loop through all the items in arg, in arg, sorry. And then at the end here, we have 35. So we have just a sum of all the numbers. So all the numbers added up is uh, 35. Remember that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, because it was the first positional argument here is number one. So that's just some more things there we can do with arcs, but hopefully you've got a general idea of what's happening now with arcs. So to kind of summarize, arcs is a, a tuple. So as I mentioned, uh, the general kind of definition of a tuple in terms of in, in a function here, a tuple, a tuple is a collection um, which is ordered and unchangeable. So we knew it was a tuple because in Python we can see they had uh, brackets around it. So I can't show, I was just running through that. Um, so it has brackets around it. So let's just print that out again. But essentially what you see here in this tuple, it is a list of numbers. So essentially we are just returning a list of numbers. So more often or not, what we want to do is we want to send or we want to have data that's being sent across to functions. Then we want to be able to collect those individual pieces of data. So this is where uh, the quags come in. So let's talk about quags now. So the main point here is whereas before we saw we generated a collection, which is essentially just a list of numbers. Now quarks is going to help us produce, remember we need the, the double asterisk here. So quarks is going to produce a dictionary. So the benefit of this is that we're going to be able to select individual items from quarks and print them out. Whereas before we just really had a list of numbers. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So let's go ahead and just do the same thing we did previously. So here we have, oh, let's just remove the X for now. Let's just work with quags. So you can see we're going to just push across one, two, three, four, and potentially put that into our quags and then print them out. So let's just see what happens when we try and do this. So you can see here that in actual fact, it causes an error. So the reason being is that quags utilize or should receive a dictionary. So let's go ahead and build a simple dictionary here. So I equals uh, A can represent or have the value of one. So let's just go ahead and send this across. So we've got the add numbers again, and this time we're using quag. So we need the double asterisk here, and then we define the variable 
which is holding our dictionary right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to pass that across to our quags and print it out. So let's just see if this works. We refresh. Looks like it's going to work. And there we go. So we have A, which is representing the value one. So something I forgot to say, which I'm adding into the tutorial here, is that quarks, so we utilize the double asterisk with quarks. So I just wanted to point out, so with the single asterisk, we're unpacking a list essentially here. And with a double asterisk, we're going to be unpacking a dictionary. Now in comparison to args here, where we're printing out essentially a list, this is going to give us extra ability in terms of once we receive this data in this function here, we're going to be able to extract out information. So take this for example, if we add some more here, so for example, B, and that can represent the value two. Over here in our quarks, what we can do is not only define um, what we want to, we not only define the fact we want to print out the quarks, we can actually also identify which value we want to print out. So we can go ahead and do that by defining what we want to print out. In this case, we're going to print out B. So let's define B and let's just see what happens now. Refresh and you can see we've output two. So now I've got a little bit more control in that what I can print out and utilize. And obviously this has much wider functionality in that I can extract information and then utilize within the function to perform other operations. So I can go ahead and just change this format if I wanted to. So if I did want to kind of pass um, positional arguments here, um, I can just uh, type them like this. So A1, for example, and B equals two. And this is going to um, perform the same action as before. And you can see here, I'm still outputting two. So I can just, let's just output them all. You can see what's happening is exactly the same here. So A is one and B is two. So far in all the tutorials, the Django tutorials that we produced, there's probably two places where we've utilized quarks. And the first one is fairly simple to understand. The second needs a little more appreciation of object oriented programming in order to fully understand. So I'm just going to cover the first one. So let's just remove all this. Let's go back. So where might we use um, our quarks here? in this program. You see here I'm using um, a function here. We've got the general concept now that this is kind of controlling this page or showing this page. So it's output in the index template and returning all the data um, that I've requested from this database request here. So let's go into the URLs. So something you've seen here, for example, in category is this item here. And this is an additional value that I can pass across to the view. So let's just do the same thing with the home without trying to mess it up too much. So let's just change the path for the home here. So slash, and then I'm just going to type in item here. So this is going to allow me to pass in some additional parameters over to my, to my function. So, or positional arguments even, in fact. So let's go ahead and um, do this. So home slash item. So let's go back into here, type in home. So now we're expecting something. So let's just type in item. So we're getting a bit of an error at the moment. Got unexpected keyword argument item. So we're not handling this item at the moment. That's the problem. This is being sent across to our, to our URL, to our home view. And at the moment, we're not actually managing this item here. So let's go into our view here. So we've got the request. And now what we want to do is take in the quarks. Okay, so what's happening here is that our, that our item here that we're typing in, that's going to be passed across. So this name here is going to be passed across, um, or this value here is going to be passed across to our, to our URL. Obviously we're defining this name value here, so item. So whatever we type here, this is the data. Think of this as the data. This is the reference point to that data. And that's what's going to be sent across to our view. So it's kind of like the equivalent of, um, whereas before of writing, for example, item and then, oh, sorry, 
it's the same as uh, typing in yep yeah, uh, item equals item for example so if I change this here to that obviously now what I'm passing across is is this to our quarks so let's just go back and uh, let's just type in well let's just keep it like that so now we, we're able to manage it so let's go ahead and just print it out so you can see what's happening so let's just uh, print our our quarks here so that should print out in the terminal like before okay so let's give this a go we're um we'll go ahead and refresh this page you can see it's working now with this additional parameter um, it doesn't matter what we type here it's not going to actually change this page because this is just an additional parameter we're taking in so you can see here for example um, item and what we've just passed in so let's just do something a bit real so you can see it's happening let's just type in hello oh, I keep pressing save um, and I've refreshed the page with hello and you can now see it it's returning hello Obviously, this is scalable. If I wanted to add more items, for example, um, part two uh, or item two, sorry. Obviously, I could do if I wanted to. So I'd need to pass in another parameter here. Hello again. Um, I keep pressing save. Let's do this properly. Hello again. And then obviously, I'm passing two items across now. So what we receive is two items in our quarks down here. So how it's utilized here in our category is that we're taking the category or we're passing in category, for example. So if we had a category called Django, that's our category. And now, oh, sorry. If we um, need to type in category to get to the category area, and then we can type in Django, for example. And what's happening is we're sending that word Django across to our view. And it's that word that we're going to utilize to perform an action on the database. So here you can see all the items that are in the category of Django. So if we go down into our view, you can see that in actual fact here, we're utilizing a, a class here, a class-based function. Um, sorry, a class-based view, sorry. Um, so let me just remove this. So you can see down here, what we're doing is we're overriding the query set here and we're using the quarks. So what we do here in, in our query, we're querying the database and then we're getting the quarks information, the category quarks information. And we're using that name, in this case, Django here, to actually perform our database action. So we're gonna get all the posts that are in the category of our quarks category. Remember this category refers to our URL here, our category. That's um, the the label that we've given that value that we're sending across. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So you can kind of see a, a real life action of how Quags is utilized there in both a function and a, a class base view. So finally, I did mention there was a different or another reason to utilize args and quarks. So I'm just going to summarize that and say when we're utilizing class-based views. So finally, I just wanted to mention the second reason where you might use args and quarks. So this is potentially a little bit more complicated to understand and to provide an example without having an appreciation of object-oriented programming uh, and how Django utilizes class-based views. But this is a class-based view. This class-based view is inheriting other objects, other methods and properties from other classes. Now, when we utilize this, this is all happening in the background. Now, sometimes we want to override some of those settings that are in those different classes. So we do that utilizing args and quarks. So when we want to override some of the methods of inherited classes, we should use the args and quarks. So if I haven't already answered your question about what args and quarks are, uh, then please leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you if you're not too sure still. Um, maybe I'll follow this up with a, another tutorial where we go through that in a little bit more detail once we know a little bit more about object-oriented programming 
and Django's class-based system. But hopefully you've got a better appreciation now of what args and quags are in the context of Django. And like I said, if you do have any questions, then please just leave them in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you.